Welcome back. In this teaching video, I'm looking at 4.3 equilibrium. 4.3 represents chapter 4, section 3 of the Pearson A level Mass Applied Mass Year 2 textbook. Let's go through the key facts of this section. Firstly, what does it mean for a rigid body to be in equilibrium? Ladies and gents, a rigid body is in equilibrium. Keyword, this means that the body is not moving if two conditions are satisfied. Condition number one, the resultant force in any direction is equal to zero. For this section 4.3 equilibrium, we're going to be looking at vertical forces. So condition number one, resultant force vertically is equal to zero. Condition number two, the sum of clockwise moment is equal to the sum of anti-clockwise moment. So we have sum of clockwise moment is equal sum of anti-clockwise moment. The moment of a force is given by force multiplied by the perpendicular distance. The unit used for the moment of a force is Newton meter. Now for 4.3 equilibrium we're going to be studying uniform body. What is the modelling assumption for a uniform body? Well ladies and gents we assume that the weight of the body acts at the centre. Now the weight is given by mg, where m is the mass, g is the acceleration due to gravity. In mechanics we take g to equal 9.8. Okay, so these are the key facts of 4.3 equilibrium. I'll be implementing these key facts within exam style questions. Let's have a look at exam style question one. A uniform plank AB has length 5 meter and mass 15 kg. The plank is held in equilibrium horizontally by two smooth supports A and C as shown in the diagram, where BC is equal to 2 meter. Part A, find the reaction on the plank at C. So I'm going to take the plank and I'm going to label all the forces acting on the plank. Now this plank is uniform, which means that the weight of the plank acts at the centre. Now the mass of the plank is 15 kg, hence the weight of the plank will be 15 g, acting at the centre. So we've got 15 g. Now 15 g will split the overall distance 5 meter into two equal parts. 5 divided by 2 is 2.5 meter. So we've got 2.5 this way and we've got 2.5 this way. Now we can fill in the gaps. We know that B to C, ladies and gents, is 2. This small gap over here is going to be 2.5 take away 2, which is 0 0.5. Now the plank is in contact with the two smooth supports. Hence the two smooth supports will exert a normal reaction on the plank. We can call the normal reaction over here RA and the normal reaction over here RC. That is my complete force diagram. Now in part A, I want to calculate the reaction on the plank at C. In other words, I want to calculate RC. Equilibrium implies that these two conditions are satisfied. Now if I use condition number one, this will give rise to an equation with two unknowns, RC and RA. Hence, we must use condition two to work out RC. So we have that sum of clockwise moment is equal sum of anti-clockwise moment. Now to work out RC, I need to eliminate the RA. To eliminate the RA, I must take moments about the point A. So take moments about A. This will eliminate RA. Okay, so now if I hold my pen at the point A, and I apply the 15g force, it's going to take the entire body clockwise. 
So let's calculate the clockwise moment. We have 15g multiplied by the perpendicular distance from the point A to the force, which is 2.5, equal, if I hold the point A, the RC force will take the entire body anti-clockwise. So let's calculate the moment of the RC force, the anti-clockwise moment. So we have RC multiplied by the perpendicular distance from the point A to RC. So that's 2.5 plus 0 0.5, which is 3. Okay, so now we can rearrange to work out RC. 15G multiplied by 2.5 is 37.5G equal 3RC. So we have 37.5G divided by 3 is equal RC. We can substitute G equal 9.8 in order to work out the numerical answer for RC. So RC is equal to 122.5 newtons. This completes part A of the question. Moving on to part B of exam style question 1. A person of mass 45 kg stands on the plank at the point D and it remains in equilibrium. The reaction on the plank at A and C are now equal. Part B, find the distance A to D. Ladies and gents, we're going to take the plank and we're going to label all the forces acting on the plank. We know that we have a uniform plank, hence the weight of the plank acts at the centre. The mass is 15 kg, the weight is 15 g, acting at the centre. Now the 15 g is going to split the overall distance 5 metre into two equal parts. 5 divided by 2 is 2.5. So we've got 2.5 in this direction and we've got 2.5 in this direction. Now we're going to fill in the gaps. As before, we know that B to C is 2. So this small gap is 2.5 take away 2, which is 0 0.5. The person of mass 45 kg stands on the plank at the point D. So for now, we can label D anywhere. It doesn't matter. The key thing is that we get the distance A to D correct. So I'll label D over here. The mass of this person is 45 kg, hence the weight is 45 g acting vertically downwards. The distance A to D is what we're after. I can call this X. The reaction on the plank at A and C are now equal. So over here, I can label the reaction as R, and over here, I can label the reaction as R. This is my complete force diagram. I can now calculate the distance A to D, in other words, the value of X. Now, if I look at this diagram, I've got two unknowns. I've got the R and I've got the X. Now, to work out R, I can use condition number one of equilibrium. Resultant force vertically is equal to zero. So I'm going to resolve vertically, taking upwards to be the positive direction. The resultant force F has to equal zero. Let's work out F. Now, we take up to be positive, so we've got R plus R minus 15G minus 45G. So that is my F. This must equal zero. I can simplify this equation. So I've got 2R minus 60G equal zero. 2R is equal 60G. Hence R is equal 60G divided by two, which is 30G. I can keep my normal reaction in terms of g, it's not a problem, but I'm going to substitute g equal 9.8 to get the numerical value. So if I substitute g equal 9.8, I get r equal 294 newtons. So I've got 294 here, and I've got 294 here. Now to work out x, I can use condition number 2 of equilibrium. Sum of clockwise moment is equal sum of anti-clockwise moment. So we've got sum of clockwise moment is equal sum of anti-clockwise moment. So I'm trying to calculate the distance A to D. So I'm going to take moments about A, for example. So take moments about A. 
So this will eliminate the force coming out of A, in this case the 294 newtons. So we're calculating the moments of three different forces, the 45G, 15G and the 294 newtons. Now, if I hold my pen at the point A and I apply the 45G force, this will take the entire body clockwise. In the same way, if I apply 15G force, this will take the entire body clockwise. So let's calculate the sum of clockwise moment. Starting off with the moment of the 45G force. So we've got 45G, the force multiplied by the perpendicular distance from the point A to the force, which is X. Plus, let's calculate the moment of the 15G force. So we've got 15G multiplied by the perpendicular distance from the point A to the force 15G, that is 2.5. this must equal the anti-clockwise moment. So if I hold my pen at the point A and I apply this force, this will take the entire body anti-clockwise. So let's calculate the anti-clockwise moment. We've got the force 294 multiplied by the perpendicular distance from the point A to that force. So that would be 2.5 plus the 0.5, which is three. Okay, so now I can simplify this equation. So I've got 45, Gx plus 37.5g equal to 294 multiplied by 3, which is 882. Okay, so now I can make x the subject. So I get x equal 882 minus 37.5g over 45g. Okay, so if I substitute g equal 9.8 into my equation, I get x equal precisely, after using my calculator, 7 over 6. Okay, so, therefore, the distance a to d is equal 7 over 6 meter. That there completes exam style question 1. Moving on to exam style question 2. A uniform beam AB has weight W newtons and length 8 meter. The beam is held in horizontal position in equilibrium by two vertical light inextensible wires attached to the beam at the points A and C, where A to C is equal 4.5 meters as shown in the diagram. A particle of weight 30 newtons is attached to the beam at B. Part A show that the tension in the wire attached to the beam at C is given by this particular expression. Ladies and gents, we're going to first take the beam and we're going to label all the forces acting on the beam. The beam is modeled to be a uniform beam, hence the weight of the beam has to act at the center. The weight is W newtons, so we can label W newtons acting at the center. Now the W is going to take the entire distance, eight meters, and split it into two equal parts. So eight divided by two is four. So we've got four this way, and we've got four this way. Now from the diagram, we've got that the distance A to C is 4.5. We can use that to fill in the gaps. So this part over here is going to be 8 take away 4.5, which is 3.5. Now for this wire, we can label the tension as TA. And for this wire, we can label the tension as TC. A particle of weight 30 newtons is attached to the beam at the point B. So at B, we've got another weight. So that weight is 30 newtons. This is my complete force diagram. Now, if we use condition number one of equilibrium, resultant force vertically is equal to zero, this will give rise to three unknowns in my equation. TA, TC, and W. I want to work out the tension in the wire attached to the beam at C in terms of W, which means that I need TC to equal this, hence I must eliminate the TA. To do that, I'm going to be using condition two of equilibrium, and that is sum of clockwise moment is equal sum of anti-clockwise moment. To eliminate the TA, I must take moments about the point A. Okay, so take moments 
about A. This will eliminate TA. Right, so if I take moments about A, I am calculating the moment of three different forces, the W, TC and the 30. If I hold on to the point A, the W force will take the entire body clockwise. The 30 force will take the entire body clockwise. So let's calculate the sum of clockwise moment, starting off with the W force. So I've got W multiplied by the perpendicular distance from the point A to W, which is 4, plus the 30 force multiplied by the perpendicular distance from the point A to the 30 force, that is 8. This will equal the anti-clockwise moment. If I hold on to the point A and I apply the TC force, that will take the entire body anti-clockwise. So let's work out the moment of the TC force. So I've got TC multiplied by the perpendicular distance from the point A to the TC force, which is 4.5. Okay, so we have 4W plus 240 equal 4.5 TC. So now I can divide through by 4.5. So I've got 4W divided by 4.5 plus 240 divided by 4.5 equal TC. And this is precisely, that becomes 8 over 9W plus that becomes 160 over 3. In brackets, Newtons. That there, ladies and gents, completes part A of exam style question 2. Moving on to part B of exam style question 2. Find in terms of W the tension in the wire attached to the beam at A. So we're trying to calculate TA. That is our target. Ladies and gents, we've got TC in terms of W. So we can work out TA by using condition number one of equilibrium. That is resultant force vertically is equal to zero. So if I resolve vertically, taking up to be the positive direction, I know that the resultant force F has to equal zero. So my resultant force F is going to be TA plus TC minus W minus 30. This must equal 0. Hence now I can work out TA. So TA is equal W plus 30 minus TC. Now I've got TC in terms of W in part A. So I can substitute that in. This gives me TA is equal W plus 30 minus my TC, which is 8 over 9W plus 160 over 3. I can expand the bracket. So I've got minus 8 over 9W minus 160 over 3. So I can collect the W's and the constants. So if I do this, I end up with TA is equal 1 over 9W minus 70 over 3 Newtons. So that there is a tension in the wire attached to the beam at A in terms of W. Moving on to part C of exam style question 2. Given that the tension in the wire attached to the beam at C is 12 times the tension in the wire attached to the beam at A, find the value of W. So we have that TC has to equal 12 lots of TA. We can use this to generate an equation involving W. So TC is this expression, equal 12 lots of TA, which is this expression. Now we can rearrange and make W the subject. So if I rearrange and make W the subject, I end up with W equals 750. So that there is the value of W. This completes exam style question two and this teaching video 4.3 equilibrium. If you found this teaching video useful, please don't forget to subscribe, leave a like, leave a comment, turn on your notification bell so that you receive notifications every time I post a new teaching video.